So what what wisdom do you gain from this idea that uh, the initial search over Twitter mm -hmm. was the thing that opened the door uh, to these investors, to these uh, brilliant minds that kind of supported you? I think there is something powerful about like showing something uh, that was not possible before. Uh, there is some element of magic to it. Uh, and especially when it's very practical too. Mm. Um, you're, you are curious about what's going on in the world, what's the social interesting relationships, social graphs. Uh, I think everyone's curious about themselves. I, I spoke to Mike Krieger, the founder of Instagram, and he told me that uh, the f even though you can go to your own profile by clicking on your profile icon on Instagram, the most common search is people searching for themselves on Instagram. <laughs> oh, that's dark and beautiful. So yeah. it's funny, right? That's funny. So uh, our first, like the reason, per, the first release of Perplexity went really viral because people would just enter their social media handle on the Perplexity search bar. Actually, it's really funny. We released both the Burr, Twitter search and the regular perplexity search mm -hmm. uh, a week apart. And we couldn't index the whole of Twitter, obviously, because mm -hmm. we scraped it in a very hacky way. And so we implemented a backlink where if your Twitter handle was not on our Twitter index, it would use our regular search that would pull up a few of your tweets and give you a summary of your social media profile. Mm -hmm. And it would come up with hilarious things because back then it would hallucinate a little bit too. <laughs> so people loved it. They would like, or like they either were spooked by it saying, oh, this AI knows so much about me. Or they were like, oh, look at this AI saying all sorts of shit about me. <laughs> and they would just share the screenshots of that query alone. And that would be like, what is this AI? Oh, is this called, is this thing called perplexity? And you go, what do you do is you go and type your handle at it and it'll give you this thing. And then people started sharing screenshots of that in Discord forums and stuff. And that's what led to like this initial growth when like you're completely irrelevant mm -hmm. to like at least some amount of relevance. But we knew that's not like, that's like a one-time thing. It's not like every way is a repetitive query, but at least uh, that gave us the confidence that there is something to pulling up links and summarizing it. Mm -hmm. And we decided to focus on that. And obviously we knew that this Twitter search thing was not, uh, scalable or doable for us because Elon was taking over and the, he was very particular that like he's going to shut down API access a lot. And so it made sense for us to focus more on regular search. That's a big thing to take on web search. Mm -hmm. That's a big move. Yeah. What were the early steps to do that? Like what's required to take on web search? Honestly, I the way we thought about it was let's release this there's nothing to lose. Uh, it's a very new experience. People are going to like it. And maybe some enterprises will talk to us mm -hmm. and ask for something of this nature for their internal data. And yeah. maybe we could use that to build a business. That was the extent of our ambition. That's why, like, you know, like most companies never set out to do what they actually end up doing. It's almost like accidental. So for us, the way it worked was we'd put it up, put this out. And a lot of people started using it. I thought, okay, it's just a fad and you know the usage will die. But people were using it like in the time, we put it out on December 7, 2022. Mm -hmm. And people were using it even in the Christmas vacation. I thought that was a very powerful signal because there's no need for people when they're hanging out with their family and chilling on vacation to come use a product by a completely unknown startup with an obscure name, right? Yeah. So I thought there was some signal there. And okay, we, we initially had, didn't had it conversational. It was just giving you, you only one single query. You type in, you get, a, you get an answer with summary with, with the citation. You had to go and type a new query if you wanted to start another query. There was no like conversational or suggested questions, none of that. So we launched the conversational version with the suggested questions a week after New Year. Mm -hmm. And then the usage started growing exponentially. And most importantly, like a lot of people are clicking on the related questions too. So we came up with this vision. Everybody was asking me, okay, what is the vision for the company? What's the mission? Like I had nothing, right? Like it was just explore cool search products. But 
then I came up with this mission along with the help of my co-founders that, hey, this is, this is, it's not just about search or answering questions, it's about knowledge, helping people discover new things and guiding them towards it, not necessarily like giving them the right answer, but guiding them towards it. And so we said, we want to be the world's most knowledge-centric company. It was actually inspired by Amazon saying they wanted to be the most customer-centric company on the planet. We want to obsess about knowledge and curiosity. And we felt like that is a mission that's bigger than competing with Google. You never make your mission or your purpose about someone else. Mm -hmm. Because you're probably aiming low, by the way, if you do that. You want to make your mission or your purpose about uh, something that's bigger than you and the people you're working with. And that way you're working, you're, you're thinking like in, in a completely outside the box too. And um, Sony made it their mission to put Japan on the map, not Sony on the map. Yeah. And I mean, in Google's initial vision of making yeah. the world's information accessible to yeah. everyone, that was... Correct. Organizing the information, making it universally accessible and useful. It's very powerful. Crazy. Yeah. Except like, you know, it's not easy for them to serve that mission anymore. And nothing stops other people from adding on to that mission, rethink that mission too, right? Mm -hmm. Wikipedia also, in some sense, does that. It does organize the information around the world and makes it accessible and useful in a different way. Mm -hmm. Perplexity does it in a different way. And I'm sure there'll be another company after us that does it even better than us. And that's good for the world. 